Okay, so this is how you tune with an SMPS or an MPPS clone. I've uh, tuned some files myself with uh, VAG Suite. I'm now on my seventh remap, just very slowly um, tweaking it, building up the boost, building up the fuel delivery, <laughs> building up the fuel delivery, uh, doing it slowly and carefully. Hence the seven maps. So um, here's what you're going to need: your laptop. You need your tuning cable, such as this SMPS I got off eBay. You can also use things like the Galetto, um, but uh, I chose the SMPS. Other things highly recommended, power adapter for your laptop, extension cable, and a 12 volt battery charger of some sort. The more stable the better. And you all need a car. So obviously you have to have a rough idea what you're doing in the first place. I wouldn't recommend getting one of those um, eBay tuning files and, and sticking them on. I mean, just people putting uh, ECU flashes on for engines which are close, um, which, which isn't right. So for example, this is the Polo 1.4 TDI. But there's an Audi A2 with uh, a similar engine, but there's nutcases flashing maps from the Audi onto the Polo and stuff. You know, it's crazy talk. Okay, so get your flash tool and plug it into the OBD2 port. Plug in, whack that in your laptop. Get your power up in your laptop. I should also point out that it's always very tempting not to plug in your power for your laptop because it's got a battery and for your car because you know it says on the screen that it's got 12 volts, but don't give in to the temptation. Don't dick about. If you brick your ECU, it's going to be expensive. That's the one thing with flashing stuff in your driveway, is that something goes really wrong. You don't have the same level of equipment to fix it that the, the pros do. So we have flash tool. Powered up. USB in. Software. Or laptop. So this is MPPS. First thing I'm going to do is hit the ECU ID button once I've selected so I've selected my car, it's a Volkswagen Polo with the appropriate engine EDC 15 ECU I'm going to hit ECU ID so waking ECU, receiving information ok and it pops up at the top there with what you're working with uh, car details in the bottom left hand corner you've got the voltage that's currently on the car uh, which is good. You need to make sure you're above 12 volts and no chance of the voltage dying midway through your flash because that will kill everything. That done, I always do a read first of all, so with the keys in the ignition, lights are on, I'm going to hit read. Now in my car, it normally throws an error the first time I run it, asks me to remove the dashboard fuse. This time it's going straight into reading flash. Let's do that now. Voltage, progress meter, timer, the little transfer thing. Away she goes. I've also got LEDs flashing away. Okay, so reading the flash off the ECU takes about two minutes on this particular car. You might have heard a slight little noise there from the ECU, somewhere in amongst the dashboard stuff it makes a little buzz noise. Um, and then it asks me where to save the file. Okay, so I'll give that a little name, save. Does we just switch off the key to continue? So let's do that. And then hit OK. switch on the key to continue.
reading the flash isn't something you need to do every time but it's a bit of a safety precaution and it means that I can check everything like the voltage running, I've got my power, my connection to the ECU is okay before I actually do the flash. Safety first. I'm going to flash now, so key on. I'll just select my ECU again. I've done my ID, I've done my read, and I'm about to do my write. And it's important to note that the program I'm using does the checksum for me, so I don't need to check to do a check on the well to check the checksum. So I'm going to go to write. It's good to keep just your remap files in their own folder. Um, there is a chance if you store your remap binary files in amongst other stuff, you could write a spreadsheet or something onto the ECU, which you don't want. You really don't want. Here is remap 7. Double click that. Do we want to continue programming? Keys in. Ignition on. 12 volts. Battery's plugged in. Continue programming. Okay, and we're off. Transferring, going well. Got my lights on, my duvet key. I don't know what that noise is, but it only happens when I'm reading or writing to the ECU. Okay, ECU made a noise that time. Switch off the key to continue. Up to that, key off. Wait five seconds, let's hit OK. See you making its noise. Okay. Without further ado, I'll then unplug my USB. I'll unplug the LPG adapter. Make sure I'm not in gear. And I will start the engine. The engine still runs. Which is a good start. At this time I bumped up the boost a little bit more, which I've been doing in 10 millibar increments. I increased the fueling and the torque limiter um, at the top end of uh, the driver's wish map. Uh, and this time, for the first time, I also advanced the ignition timing by about half a degree um, when it's on peak boost. Because um, there's more fuel going in there and I want to see what that does for the power. So Okay, so that's it. Unplug all your stuff. Um, switch off the engine after you've made sure it runs again. Um, pack up your battery charger. Make sure you don't buzz yourself on the battery terminals when you uh, unplug it. Um, and then go for a test drive, probably. You can check out the outtakes from when I bricked the ECU a couple minutes ago. Uh, and if you like what we're doing, hit like, hit share, plus one us, um, and subscribe. And let us know in the comments what else we'd like to see. Cheers. Bye.